The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 378 Letting Everyone Down Hey, Scheinsberg greeted, stepping into the Dream's observation room and noting Valet sullenly draped in a hammock to the side. Meh, Valet replied. Scheinspark raised an eyebrow. Are you all right? Or still thinking about the things that were said over dinner? And where did you get that? This reed bed? Valet set up just enough to poke at the rope net beneath her. Saw it on someone's porch in Riverfall. Thought it looked neat and decided to liberate it. Don't worry, I asked first. Scheinspark nodded. Valet hadn't answered the real question, indicating she didn't want to talk about it. And that was fine with her. I'm just wandering, Scheinsberg went on. Been piloting all day, so I need to stretch my legs before I can get to sleep even though my eyes are dead. Nothing's going on in here, then? Nah, just me, your friendly old Lion Ridge arch nemesis. Valet waved a careless hoof, eyes fixed on the shadow landscape ahead of them as the sun made its final descent below the horizon. I feel like moping, but didn't want to do it around everyone else, cause it'd ruin my image. Be careful, my hair is contagious. Because you just found out we're going somewhere where bad ponies aren't really appreciated. Scheinsberg sat down, facing alongside her. If it helps, it's news to me too. Valet rested her chin on one forehoof, the other stuck far outside the hammock net. Feels like the kind of thing someone should have mentioned. But again, I never gave the Griffin Empire the time of the day before. Didn't even recognize their ambassador. Was kind of too busy looking after myself and a bunch of warring districts and all that. Scheinspark felt her coat tingle with a familiar annoyance, fur standing on end. I still don't know if I believe you about always being altruistic, she admitted. I know you're on our side now, but you're the single biggest thing that raised my blood pressure in Anridge. It always felt like you were above the rules, stringing us along. You could do anything you wanted and only let the spirit continue so it could be your toy. This is probably the wrong thing to say, but you always seem to me like someone who fries in adversity. Thanks, Valet muttered. That's exactly what I was doing. Scheinspark's ears folded. Oh. Valet continued looking away, her shiny gold pendant pressed against her neck by the hammock. It was always the bad guy. The ponies are going to hate you anyway. Why not give them a reason to? I kept Ironwich stable because I needed it, not out of the goodness of my heart or anything. But anyway, I'm brooding. Anything you need? Like I said, I'm just stretching my legs. Shinespark tapped her cast against the floor and yawned. I do feel sorry for you, though. I just wanted to say that. Valet flicked an ear. Don't we have healing thingamajigs? You don't need to wear that clunky thing all the time. I go insane with my legs stuck in a pipe day in and day out. How do you even sleep with that? By rolling on my other side so it's on top, Shinespark shrugged. And I do need to wear it, I think. Our supplies of medicine that powerful are limited, so there's no reason to use it when I don't need to be in top performance and am not in danger. Besides, it's a reminder, she hesitated. I suppose you wouldn't want to relate. What about being reminded about Iron Ridge? Well, I shrugged. Not like I've got all that much else to be reminded of, and I made a pretty good effort to enjoy it. No way could I do it again, but eh, scratch that, I'll find a way. The point is, I don't know, I don't have a point. Like I said, I'm just psyching myself up to deal with all this Griffin Empire stuff. I... Shrinesburg stopped herself before she could start. I'm realizing I don't know you well enough to tell what I could say that would be encouraging and what would be in poor taste and offensive. I'm sorry. First off, that puts you a step above Bird Overlay, remarked, not lifting her head so she had room to move her chin while speaking. Second... Don't worry about it. I've got a thick skin and thrive on petty insults. Used to at least. Hope I still can. And third, she rolled over so her legs were in the air, then stretched. Pretty sure I've got no choice but to either take it or embrace it. And I know how things went down in Iron Ridge. So, if the Griffin Empire is really gonna hate my guts, I need less of encouragement and more a partner in crime. Shinespark nervously blushed. Well, I'm not sure about... Ah, come on, Sparky. Valet tried to give her a playful shove, but couldn't reach from the hammock. You're too much of a goody-goody hero. You don't have a villainous bone in your body, and you don't have a clue what you're missing out on. 
You left Iron Ridge. Yeah, I don't know how you see it, but it can't be better than me making off with my greatest enemy squash than a bag of Griffin Gold. I'm gonna be living the life. You just need to watch out for any other bad dudes who might try to outtrap Scally and me. Litter with some banana peels, start a few bar fights, you know. Screwing with ponies who go out of their way not to care about you can be refreshing once you embrace it. Um, not sure how to reply to that either, Shinespark admitted. Think less, do more. Valet poked a hoof at her muzzle. Keeps you from getting edgy and existential. Seriously, that has to be, like, my greatest fear. Not really, but, you know, if I actually considered it from multiple angles, I'd be all... Wait, I just saved Unridged's rear big time, and they probably still think I'm a massive villain, if not part of the problem, and... Yeah, fun trains of thought. When life gives you moldy, rotten lemon peel someone else made lemonade with years ago, and then stored in a dumpster you were rooting through on a hot day in search of anything edible whatsoever, you punch the vendor in the face, rob them blind, and dance cackling all the way to market. Or something. That... An allergy got away from me a little. Is me listening helping, or is that your way of saying you want to be left alone? Shinespark raised an eyebrow, highly uncertain. Valet touched her tongue to her nose. Whatever, Sparky. I told you I'm not thinking right now. In one ear and out the other. Might as well be singing a loud Lentula song. Wanna find out who's worse at singing? Are you sure you're all right? Shinesberg folded her ears in concern. No, of course I'm not all right. Valet said it as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. I spend my entire life getting treated like a villain, act the part since it doesn't make a difference and I know it, but still try to keep things on track in the big picture since I don't want to be a complete monster. Then some random mayor comes along and convinces me to try harder, throw my weight on the other side of the fence, Put my life on the line, be a big, giant hero, and my reward's the same thing as always. No ceremony, big whoop, and I'm just sitting here trying to stay cheery and ridiculous because it makes me feel like me, and I enjoy that, and... Yeah, she sighed, visibly deflating. I warned you, stick around me right now, and you get brooded at. Sorry, though, that's all I've got. Shinespark clenched her teeth, feeling the same tightness in her throat she got in the low districts every time she met a pony who had been slighted by the city's changing tides. An outrage against injustice converted to a fire to do better, and tempered by the knowledge that then and there it was impossible and she had to play the long game. But not only did she not see a long game here, it was something she was completely unused to feeling about Valet. I might not be the best pony to go to for sympathy, she warned. You frustrate me. How I'd always be doing something, and you'd show up and interfere with my plans purely for fun, since you always could have stopped me instantly by threatening to expose my secrets around Brain and its airship. But you never did, as long as you were having fun. I was just a toy to you. I told you, I had to get my fun somewhere, Valet shrugged. Life tends to be a dump when everyone is biased against you, and I wasn't about to roll over and let it. Look who's talking, though. Something, something, born on an airship and that automatically makes it the greatest thing since sliced bread? Talk about being frustrated by someone. There's a lot of pressure that comes with that, though. Schweinsberg hung her head. I didn't ask for the legacy I have. My mother even named me after one of the Yekekistan virtues. Everybody kept me protected as a foal, but the moment I decided to step into the public theater, everything I've done has been influenced by the expectations of others. I had my goals, and they were noble, but when you're on a pedestal that high... Hello, Valet interrupted, still staring out the window. Everyone expected me to be a villain, still did, and I did my best to lap it up, but nobody wants to be a true monster. Well, maybe Herman, but... When everyone expects the worst from you, and even those who say they're for you are giving you the benefit of the doubt at best... I joked about my greatest fear earlier, but honestly, I'm just terrified of letting everyone down, Shinespark finished with a whisper. But you know how that feels. They made eye contact, and a sudden spark passed between them. Hey, good dog, Sparky, Valet chirped, suddenly rejuvenated. Random idea, but we should actually hang out sometime. Tomorrow, though? Tomorrow, Shinespark yawned. It sounds like we have more common than I thought. End 
of chapter 378.